Hi there. Thanks for joining us today for our virtual service. I'd like to update you on a couple of things about the virtual service. First of all, by the time you watch this, perhaps on Sunday or sometime on Friday and Saturday, I will have celebrated a milestone here with Bracebridge United Church. On October the 1st, 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, I arrived here in the church. That was my first official day, but I was actually here on the 30th of September. And you know what I did that day? I helped film my very first video for our virtual services. I'd never done that before. There was a learning curve. It took me a while to get used to doing this, but it's been an interesting two years for me and even longer since uh, March of 2020 journey that we have undertaken with these virtual services. I know that for a time, they are what sustained many of us in feeling a sense of community together, in feeling like we were worshiping as a community, that we were connected even though we were not physically together. For off and on, for almost a total combined of a year, this was the only worship service that we were able to provide as part of the ministry of our church. And while it has been a learning curve for myself, for Mary Ruth, for Nancy, and at the time for Jan, it was also something that nourished us and kept us going. It was, has been a source of tremendous anxiety over the last two years, especially when glitches happen like we recorded the entire service only to discover that the battery on the microphone had died. And I wish I could say that only happened once, but there have been many um, moments where this process of sharing our ministry with you digitally has been both incredibly rewarding and fair to say, incredibly challenging. And it has created uh, many bloopers, many moments of hilarity. And I know that for those of you that watch, it has been a point of connection that continues on. The reality is though, that as a church, we are evolving. Who we were post uh, pre-pandemic is different from who we are post-pandemic and the needs of our community are evolving too. And so one of the things that uh, as a worship committee and as an executive council and as a ministry team, we have come to realize is that while this has been a vital lifeline and link to those that have been watching and those of us that have been creating, the time has come where we must shift our focus onto other more urgent and pressing in-person uh, priorities. We know that this will be a challenge for some of you, that COVID is not over, that it is still a reality in our world. But as we work towards a new way of normalcy and being as a community, trying to find new ways to come together to prioritize working on what our new vision of a church is and what we are able to do with the resources we have, those things have become very important. And we're very encouraged that people are coming back to church on Sunday morning. And I hope that for those of you that are still watching at home, this might be something in the near future that you feel comfortable doing. Because even though I'm celebrating my second anniversary, there are some things in worship and in the church life that we are just beginning to be able to do together. And I'm still having firsts, things like coffee time together and first communion service with some of you in person. And these are very exciting things for all of us. And I hope it indicates that we can return to the thriving, busy, exciting place that we were pre-COVID. I know that for some of you this will be a challenge, and I'm sorry for that, because I know how much of a link with the community this has provided for you. But it doesn't mean the end to all digital content. 
hopefully this will give us the opportunity to focus on special services, uh, something that might be a little different, ways of connecting with each other at key points in our church year. So I thank you for two years of faithfully watching, for two years of putting up with our learning curve and our goofs and some which have occasionally made it into the live service on YouTube and our sincere efforts to continue to keep our community faithfully worshiping together. Our YouTube channel will continue to be available. Any of the content that we have shared with you in the last two and a half years will still be accessible. So if you don't feel like you're ready to come back to church, there will be that option there. And I encourage you to keep checking those things out. If you feel like you wanna to talk to me about this decision, please phone me, drop by the office. I love meeting with people and let me know what you think. And should our world change dramatically as again, as it did before, then of course we will be responsive to the changing situation. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy this last virtual series, virtual service for now. The announcements that I'd like to share with you for this week, we will be celebrating communion during this service. And so I invite you to take a moment and pause the video and find something with which you can celebrate communion. It doesn't have to be bread and grape juice. It could be any form of bread type product, crackers, bread, butter tarts, cinnamon buns, if that's what you have at home, and a liquid, wine, juice, water, whatever you have accessible to you. The Holy Spirit can use whatever we bring. Uh, so I encourage you to take a moment and make sure you have that uh, so that when we come to that time in the service, you'll be prepared. Other announcements to bring to your attention. Well, we always have many interesting things going on here at Bracebridge United Church. So check out our website and you can learn what's going on each week, what community programs are functioning out of our building as we move further and further away from COVID restrictions and closer to a new way of living and being that is part of understanding COVID is in our world, we have many more things happening here in the building. So I encourage you to check out our website. If you wanna know what's happening on a weekly basis, check out our e-blast. You can phone in to our office and talk to Avery and she'll make sure you're on our list. Let's light our candle, inviting God's presence into our midst and then we will listen to our prelude. Let's join together through music.
God and center ourselves in the words of our call to worship. All around the world, tables are set this Worldwide Communion Sunday, readying for the sacrament of the Lord's table. We join the multitude of God's people gathering together on this holy day as God welcomes us with love enough to fill our every need. We welcome this opportunity to open our hearts to one another and our hands to the world. Let us join our hearts and voices in grateful praise and prayer as we worship God. Our opening hymn is It's a Song of Praise to the Maker, found on page 30 of More Voices. throughout all our days, sharing our pain, helping us to celebrate, giving us hope when our hope seems lost. As we gather today to worship you and to receive food and drink for our daily journeys, bind us in the unity of love into one worldwide community through Christ, our host. Amen. 
I hope you enjoy this short video for our time with our youth as we talk about what is communion with our special guest, Jody Clark. So what is communion? That's a really awesome question, Jody. Communion is a fancy word for saying that we get together in church and we say special words and we eat bread and juice. And what are the special words? Oh, well that's a good question too. The special words are the words that Jesus gave his disciples. Long ago, before Jesus died, he and his disciples were gathered together and they had supper together. And after supper, he picked up a loaf of bread that was already on the table and he picked up his cup of juice, it's probably wine, but we have juice in the church. And he said, every time you break bread and you drink wine, remember me. And he said, the bread was like his body and the wine was like his blood. And when we say the words, this is my body, this is my blood, in church, we remember what Jesus did for us. So we're remembering that Jesus died us. We are. That's what we're remembering that Jesus did. Jesus loved us so much that he died for us. And because he died for us long ago, it means that God loves us and God welcomes us one day when we die. And Jesus took anything that we ever did wrong and he took the blame for it. And so it means that we can be forgiven when we do something wrong and we remember what he did and that he gave his body for us. The bread and the juice, it's not really Jesus's body. It just reminds us of what Jesus did. Yeah. Can everyone take communion? Everybody can have communion in our church. In some churches, there are rules about when you can have communion and how old you have to be and classes you have to take. But in our church, Everybody can have communion. Anybody can come to um, the communion table and have bread and juice. And if you're younger, like you guys are watching this video, sometimes your parents decide whether or not you can have communion. And how often do we have communion? Oh, well, do you know what? You could have communion every night in your house because Jesus said, whenever you do this, remember me. So if you had bread and juice on your table and you said the special words, you could have communion every night. Although in our church, we say that only ministers like me can say the special words. But you could have communion every day if you wanted. Some churches have communion every Sunday. In our church, we have communion at Christmas and Easter, two times that are really special to us. When we remember Jesus was born at Christmas and when he died at Easter, and about four other times in the rest of the year. And we're having communion today. We are having communion today, and do you know why? I do not. Well, we're having communion today because it's worldwide communion. And that means that everybody around the whole wide world is having communion today. So other churches in Ontario, and in the rest of Canada, and in the States, and in England, and in Italy, and in Japan, anywhere people believe in Jesus, they're having communion today. So we're all doing it together. We are doing it together. And there's something really cool about the communion that we're having today. Jesus said when we have bread and juice, we remember him. But because of COVID and we want to keep everyone safe, we're having communion where we have a small cube of bread, which remembers the bread that Jesus said his, was his body. And instead of juice, we're having a little grape because grape is what you use to make juice. And so this way, we're keeping everybody safe. Thank you for telling me about communion. You're welcome, you're welcome. I hope all of you enjoy communion and I'll see you in a little bit in church and we'll celebrate it together.
Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke, from chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would slay, say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron, and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you think the slave, do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Okay, confession time. I have lots of different hobbies, but gardening is not really one of them. I'm not much good at mowing the grass because I have allergies. And mosquitoes love me, and of course, mowing the grass stirs them up. I have no real interest in weeding a garden. I like eating vegetables very much, but I'm quite content to eat the ones that someone else has grown for me. But I have had people in my life who were incredible gardeners. My grandfather loved to garden. I can remember as a little girl going to his house and in the backyard he had built a terraced garden. He lived on a lot in Toronto that was in a suburb and it had a very um, high cliff at the back that was not really usable until he terraced it. My grandfather was a bricklayer and so he built it out of cinder blocks and it had steps from the second level to the third. And as a little girl, it was as big as a mountain to me. And I loved helping him. He had created the garden in such a way that each layer could be accessed within arm's reach. Well, an adult's arm, not a little girl's arm. And it had, as I say, stairs at the end made out of cement blocks, cinder blocks. And I used to love helping him with the garden. He, of course, would start the garden inside and under grow lights. And I can remember one year I helped him plant. And he told me we were going to put the seeds in the ground. And I, I had some understanding of what a seed was, but I had never gardened before and I was pretty little. And I can remember him opening the paper packet of the seeds and telling me to hold out my hand and cup my palm and keep it steady, not drop them and he poured the seeds into my hand. I don't know what I was expecting, but it sure wasn't the tiny little black specks that landed on my palm. Even now, it amazes me how some of the fruits we eat start from such tiny little seeds. Some of them are so small that you can barely grasp them with your fingers. And when you put them in the soil, you can't see them, they disappear. It's amazing. And yet from these incredible seeds, fruit, vegetables that we eat, that nourish us, that feed the world, grow. It truly is a miracle. It's no surprise that Jesus used this analogy when he was talking about faith. The world that Jesus lived in was not a world of supermarkets and farmers markets and people that shared their produce in a wide way. Those that grew, those that ate vegetables, most likely grew them themselves in their own gardens. In very large communities, there would have been gardens around the city, but the mass farming that happens globally in our world that we see today that brings food to our supermarkets from around the globe, that wasn't happening in Jesus' time. Spice traders might have traveled, but 
Really, there wasn't a lot of produce that was being traveled around the world. What people ate, they produced. And so, this story of a mustard seed would have been incredibly familiar to the listeners. And they would have understood about the size of a mustard seed. But here's something else about the mustard plant. It grows amazingly large. In fact, it's really somewhat of a weed in places in the world. And when it has grown and been nourished and allowed to thrive, a mustard tree and a mustard plant can grow so large that small birds can actually shelter in it. It's incredible. And for those of us that like mustard, it also has an incredibly, can have an incredibly strong taste for something that is so very tiny at its inception. The people that listened to what Jesus said, well, they would have understood, perhaps, hopefully, what he was trying to say. And that he was talking about how their faith could start off as a very tiny speck and with the right nourishment and care could grow to something with incredible power and size. I want you to stop for a minute and think with me. We'll think together. What was the smallest thing that was ever done for you that had the biggest impact? What small thing in your life impacted you in the most significant way? When we look back at our lives, we tend to see the big things, the monumental moments where we have looked around us and been blown away by the magnitude of what is happening to us. Losses of people we love, big moments of celebration, weddings, proposals, births. But sometimes our lives are changed by the smallest of things. Sometimes our entire mindset in any given moment can be completely altered by one person's small action, both positively and negatively. Let me give you an example. You're having an amazing day. The sky is blue, the clouds are white, the sun is shining, your favorite music is on the radio, the right temperature, your perfect preferred temperature, is outside the car. Perhaps you have the window down. It's an amazing day. And all of a sudden, when you're driving in town, somebody cuts you off. Or perhaps they tailgate you. Or they turn in front of you and slow you down. A small thing that in the grand scheme of your day is very, very minor. No big deal. Nobody has died. You haven't won the lottery. It's just somebody in your sphere, in the world, who is behaving in a way that affects your day. Now, think about that moment because I know that you've had one of these moments, we all have. How much in that moment has it affected your day? You might say, oh, that's a minor thing. But maybe on a day like that when there's been some other minor things that have piled on top of you, maybe that one little thing is just enough to tip you over the edge. But the reverse is also true. Think about a day when you have been down. It has been a terrible day. You have perhaps just encountered someone on the road who is driving too slow or is tailgating you or does something really silly in front of you. And you think, could this day get any worse? And then something small happens. Maybe you get the next three green lights in a row. Or perhaps you go through the drive through and the person ahead of you has paid for your coffee. Or perhaps at work, you discover that somebody else has brought in cupcakes and lightened your day. And that one little thing has just taken a miserable day and made it much less so. Little things 
have a big impact sometimes on our lives. So think for a moment, what little things have you done recently in the world to make someone's life better? It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be as simple as saying, oh, I only have two items and you have um, way more. Why don't you go ahead of me? Or somebody saying to you with your two items, I have a large set of items. You go first. Perhaps it is something as simple as someone smiling at you and holding open the door and saying, hi. Simple things. But a point of human contact where somebody else has lightened your day, your life. Small little things. When was the last time you did a small thing for a person? And how much time and effort did you take to do it? Well, let's say, for instance, you held the door for somebody and you smiled at them. How long did that take you? Five seconds? No real energy expended, no effort, no lingering contact with the person. It's not like you had to hear their life story. What impact did they have in your life and what impact did you have in theirs? What I'm trying to illustrate here is that little tiny things make a difference. The mustard seed, tiny as it is, has tremendous power and strength. Your actions, tiny as they may seem, have tremendous power and strength. And your faith is the same thing. Sometimes our faith is enormous. Sometimes we feel like we could walk into a hurricane. Perhaps recently events say we shouldn't, but we feel like we could. We feel like we could conquer the world and come through the other side. Perhaps in those moments, our faith is pretty small because I don't know about you, but my experience has been my faith grows the most when I'm in a tough place. When I am firing on all cylinders and I am patting myself on the back and thinking, yeah, good job. It's much easier to have faith in me. And then there's times in life when our life is challenging and we feel abandoned or we feel helpless or we feel hurt. And sometimes our faith, our faith is very small. Sometimes we're angry and our faith is intentionally small. But here's the interesting thing about faith that Jesus was trying to help us understand. It takes very little of it and very little effort, just like holding the door for someone and saying hi, to make a big difference in how we connect to God. So imagine that you're angry at God. You are so mad at God, you don't want to talk to God. But you notice that the tree outside your window is beginning to change color in the most extravagantly beautiful way. To even be able to say, hey God, good job. That tiny little bit of faith in the action of the creator in the world around us. It's tiny, but it's an acknowledgement and saying, I know you're there, God. Now maybe you, that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe being able to look at the amazing generosity of the world around us in our food, maybe that moves you. Maybe you like a lobster meal, and maybe you say, hey God, the lobster is an incredibly weird looking animal, and I don't know who first thought that it would taste good, but good job. Little things. A hug exchanged in a loving way to support someone in a time of grief. Simply just listening when someone needs an ear, not because you feel like you should do it, but because you want to do it, because you're motivated by love and caring for others. And you know that you are loved and cared for and you want to share that gift with others. That's a tiny action of faith that makes all the difference in the world. 
sometimes just a tiny, tiny little bit of faith in God, in the hope that exists in the world around us, in each one of us, is enough to keep the fire of our faith ignited, to fan the flames of that tiny little spark and keep it going until we're able to nourish it more, until it grows. Faith is a funny thing. It is, I think, is one, one thing in our lives that feels like it ebbs and flows. And as life unfolds around us, our faith can change. It is deeply tied into love. It is connected to hope, a belief in the potential of the future to be good. It is something that can be shaken deeply. And yet, depending on how well it is rooted in our lives, is not torn away. And conversely, it is something that can be knocked over by the smallest of things. Faith is a vulnerable, fragile, incredibly strong and powerful thing. And Jesus reminds us of this with the words that he used. If you have the tiniest amount of faith, you can do incredible things. So what incredible things will you do? What incredible things have you done? But also, what tiny, small, brave acts of faith have you engaged in? Sometimes when things are really bad, it's just deciding to get out of bed. To say that I will have hope that today I will be able to get out of bed and put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. And that I will have faith that I will do this today and I will hopefully be able to do it tomorrow. Sometimes faith is dramatic and powerful and sometimes it is just very, very small, tiny things that make all the difference in the world. Know that in your faith, wherever you are, God is with you, that God is faithful to you and that wherever you find yourself, whether it's in a moment of immense faith or an infinitesimally small speck, God is with you and loving you, accepting you and never judging you for the amount of faith you have. Because as Jesus said, even the tiniest speck can do amazing things. Take this, know this, nurture the faith of those around you through tiny small actions that make all the difference in the same way that God has helped you. And then perhaps all of our faith will blossom and grow. Thanks be to God for this gift. Amen. Our next hymn today is um, going to be on the screen and shared for you there. It is hymn number 195 out of more voices, long ago and far away.
communion elements, I encourage you to take a moment and pause the video, and then we will share in the gifts of God's table together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, and we lift them up to God. We give thanks to the Lord our God, because it is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, you made this wonderful world for us to enjoy. You bless us with your love and grace. You take care of all our needs and free us from our fears. You gave us Jesus to be our friend, to teach us and to bring us closer to you. He died on a cross, but you brought him to life to live with us forever. You send us your spirit and bring us to this table so that we can share your love. For all your goodness, we give you thanks <clears throat> and together we give you praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we gather at this table, we remember that on the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, thanked you as we have thanked you, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends saying, drink. This cup is the promise of God made in my blood. Each time you drink from this cup, remember me. Remembering your boundless love for us in Christ Jesus, we offer you our praise as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, pour your spirit on us that we may know Christ in the breaking of bread and that in word and deed, we may be channels of your love, peace, and justice in the world. Send your spirit to be with those with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill or alone, all who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, all whom the world counts as last and least. We pray for your church and its varied ministries, for the nations as they strive for peace and justice, for the earth and the fragile web of life we share. For our friends and families, we gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you who loves us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts that God gives to us as children of God the body of Christ, broken that we might be whole, and the cup of Christ, poured out in love. I invite you to share in these gifts together now as we take the bread. And we share the cup, broken the cup, shed, that we might know new love. Let us pray. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received, we thank you, God. Grant that what we have done 
and have been given here may so put its mark on us that it may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may grow in Christian love and understanding and that our lives may be lives of faithful action. In Christ's name, amen. I invite you to join with me in our closing hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, and the words will be on your screen. the forgiveness and compassion that you have received at this table with everyone you meet in the world. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the rain fall soft upon your fields and the sun shine warm upon your face. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Amen. <laughs>